Hot off the press, this is the uh, newly designed KEP exhaust header. It uh, has a slip joint here and an expansion or a uh, flex pipe here. So um, everything else is the same. Um, all the bends and uh, manifold uh, flanges are all the same, but uh, they just added that uh, flex joint to hopefully prevent cracking. I've never uh, experienced that cracking but um, apparently they've had some warranty issues and uh, this here is the muffler bracket this ties in um, kind of underneath here and uh, holds up the end of the muffler so that it's all one unit tied to the engine so I'm gonna get this installed now a bit of the exhaust a uh, little close up and installed there's the expansion joint there, that's a new item that Kep uh, is putting into their system. And if we come back here, we see our muffler. And you can see the uh, exhaust bracket. Now, this attaches uh, right with the header and holds the exhaust uh, to the engine so well below the line of the um, oil pan so tucks up really nicely I think next up uh, we're gonna put in these T's uh, in the heater circuit uh, so the coolant heater circuit and what this is gonna allow is a bypass um, in case all the heater valves are closed so heater flow coming through this way out to the heater cores. If both of the valves are closed, then fluid can come down through here and then go back to the thermostat housing so um, that the thermostat can get the correct signal to open at, uh, at around uh, 78 C. So we're going to get these installed now. Here's the rig, the T rig. Um, just have a short section of heater hose um, and the hose clamps and uh, I've got the van up on ramps and I'm just gonna poke my head underneath and find a good location and just uh, cut the lines and splice it in and I'll show you that uh, where I ended up putting it in just a second okay now I'm under the right side of the van um, this is the passenger side CV joint and uh, here are the radiator tubes and we've got the T spliced into the heater hoses right here um, there is the T to go to the uh, rear heater core and if we follow the line up there's our T the bypass T and if we keep going kind of an awkward angle but you can see that these are the the, uh, connections to the engine itself so that's where I ended up putting them I usually put them right around this area and uh, it's easy to uh, to get to for the most part um, some people I've seen actually put them in the rear heater box so if you uh, go into you know underneath the rear seat you could actually splice it in there um, and I'd say that that'd be fine uh, it's easier to get to, easier to service and maintain. Um, however, um, this location right here is nice because it's really direct, so it doesn't have to go through two T's. Okay, so let's discuss the uh, engine bay cooling side of things. We've got a new um, pressure bottle here with a new sensor, um, and we've got the overflow um, coming in its stock location to to the overflow um, chamber here so we can still access that from uh, the license plate and then we have our radiator hose going from the uh, Subaru engine it ducks nicely around here I put a little bit of extra tube around it just around some of the more critical areas um, just for protection then that comes underneath here and we've 
got a splice right here. It's basically a T. So that basically tees up into the coolant bottle. And then the top port here has a KEP uh, petcock. This comes with their petcock kit. And uh, this allows you to pressurize the system for bleeding. Um, you just turn this and it opens up the valve so you can uh, put some pressure on this. And so that T underneath the bottle then goes to um, just a generic hose here um, just for the, the odd bend that it makes. And then I just have it uh, lightly uh, held up here by this guy. Also another piece of extra hose kind of just um, for support there. And then I've got another coupler right here which goes into a Subaru upper radiator hose right here. So that's for the upper end of things. Then the piece going down to the thermostat it uses a Subaru upper radiator hose and comes down. Let's see if you can see this better. So it goes down right there. Meets up with a piece of uh, inch and a quarter galvanized steel. So it's also known as EMT. Um, it's basically electrical conduit. Has pretty good galvanic properties uh, um, with uh, aluminum. So that then goes to this radiator hose down here. And I'll try and post part numbers for these radiator hoses. That way, um, if you want to try and mimic this design, it'll be a little easier for you. Another option is to go with the reverse manifold, uh, which you know many vendors offer. Um, so basically, rather than the radiator hose coming this direction and going all the way back here, um, it will actually exit back here and then you have to make a really funky connection to get it down to here. Um, I generally don't don't like that. I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, it definitely cleans up the engine bay as far as hoses go. But I uh, side with out front motorsports. Um, if you don't have to change the stock scenario, don't. So that that's my take on it. But not to say that they're bad or anything. I just I just prefer to keep things as stock as possible on the engine itself. So for a, a detailed like write up uh, pictorial, you can go to bussaroo.com, also known as boxerswaps.com, and I actually have pictures of the entire process of an, the engine swap. And they're, they're probably a little more detailed than I'd be able to put into a video here. So just check that out. It's under the Subaru Vanagon section. And it'll go over all of the um, connections uh, that I show here, basically. Maybe slightly different, but the general idea.